Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to honorable guest, Ms. Rekha Sharma, Chairperson, National Commission for Women, Government of India. We are grateful to have you, ma'am, amongst us today. Thank you so much. Before I provide the listeners the introduction of our esteemed speaker for today's talk, allow me a minute to tell listeners about Shakti Initiative at UPES Dehradun. Today happens to be the seventh episode of Shakti Talk series for which ma'am has accepted our invitation to come address and interact with this audience. At UPES, we believe that education across levels is the best form of empowerment that can be extended to women to positively impact the state of their being, their status and position in society to build a solid foundation for their holistic growth and development. With an aim to create an ecosystem that empowers women and equips them with knowledge, skills and self-confidence, UPES declared the year 2020 as year of women empowerment and launched the initiative so rightly named as Shakti to equip girls with the quality education and training to boost their participation across levels. The university among key initiatives also announced an unconditional 25% scholarship on tuition fee of complete program to, dura to duration of complete program duration to all female students applying for undergraduate and postgraduate courses starting with the session 2020. Besides all this, the university also runs a very rigorous leadership development program to empower women employees by developing their adaptive and technical skills under the edges of Shakti. To further the agenda of empowering women from classroom to boardroom, we have been fortunate to learn from various women leaders, ma'am, across different domains over this year. Today, we are extremely privileged and delighted to have you amongst us, Ms. Rekha Sharma, Chairperson, National Commission for Women, Government of India, over here. Ms. Rekha Sharma is Chairperson of National Commission for Women since August 2018. She joined National Commission for Women as a member in 2015 and was holding additional charge as a chairperson of National Commission for Women from September 2017. She possesses a leadership style which is dynamic, compassionate, and she's willing to make a difference. National Commission for Women under her leadership launched a national legal services authority in eight Indian states for empowering women through legal services on 74th Independence Day. The campaign aims to legally empower women, especially hailing from remote corners of the country with help from district-wise legal authorities. The commission under her astute leadership has developed legal awareness programs in collaboration with Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathans for students of class 11th and 12th, as well as for the students of central and state universities. NCW under her leadership organized a consultation policy on formulation of women and children in disasters as women are and children are the most adversely affected in, case, in cases of a disaster. Various representatives from civil society, state commission for women, national disaster management authority, national disaster uh, relief force, national institute for disaster management, national human rights commission and NCPCR took part in the deliberations along with NCW. During the extraordinary times of pandemic in which we all are living, the commission in her guidance has launched one of its kind WhatsApp helpline number for women. NCW constituted a special happy to help task force to take care of the needs of medicines and other amenities for lonely persons at home. NCW has launched a digital li literacy and an online safety program to train tens of thousands of women to fight mis misinformation and cybercrime. Ma'am has been advocate of equal property rights for women and NCW in, under her leadership has reviewed many laws pertaining to women Sexual Harassment at Workplace Act and the guardianship rights of the mothers, etc. She sends it. She sent its recommendations to the Law Ministry as well. Under her guidance, NCW conducted several gender sensitization workshops last year for law enforcement authorities in collaboration with state police departments to sensitize the police departments on gender issues. Ms. Sharma played a pivotal role in inspection of 400 plus Swadhar grads set up across nation by Ministry of Women and Child Development to ensure 
primary need of shelter, food, clothing, medical treatment, and care of the women in distress. After she took over the chairperson, the commission is working in close coordination with various state commissions, organizing programs for increasing their efficiency in dealing with the cases of crime against women. The commission has, led by her has also recommended bringing in some pertinent changes in the working of psychiatric homes, which are being used for counseling for female inmates. Ms. Sharma has been a vocal supporter of making women independent and self-reliant, and as a part of which the commission organized consultation on assisting women-led enterprises in association with the Ministry of MSME, Government of India. Ms. Sharma has studied at DAV College, Dehradun. So she has a definite connection with Uttarakhand. She has a degree in political science, history and English literature, and she also holds a diploma in marketing and advertising. Ma'am, with my folded hands, I welcome you again. Your laurels are too many, and it will be very difficult for me to run through all of them. But while we know so much about your achievements in your public life, ma'am, we would also like to know more about your journey. From being a young student while you were studying in Dehradun, and to now to an illustrious position of chairperson of National Commission for Women Government of India. Ma'am, please take us through that. Over to you, ma'am. First of all, uh, good morning to everyone, all the participants, viewers, uh, everyone from UPS. Thank you for inviting me in this talk. Uh, I'm happy because I'm, a, I'm uh, from, born and brought up in Uttarakhand and now I'm talking to people who are from Uttarakhand. So I'm really happy to share my journey with you all. And as you know, we Uttarakhandis are very, very proud of our heritage, our uh, nature, our uh, place of birth. So I'm happy that I'm sharing everything with you today. So I was born in Uttarakhand uh, to a very middle class family. My father uh, struggled a lot. He came from uh, Lahore after the partition and started his life uh, again, all over again, with uh, not only taking care of his own family, but also his uh, parents and uh, brothers and sisters. We being a very, very big family, we were five brothers, sisters, and uh, my father really struggled a lot uh, because he was in uh, CDA Air Force. We settled in Dehradun because it is the offices there. Uh, I was born in 63, uh, the times were tough and we all know how the uh, financial conditions used to be in those days in a very, very middle-class family. So I studied in uh, Kendre Vidyalay, Hathi Burkla, Kendre Vidyalay 1. Uh, and uh, I'm so proud that I'm product of Kendre Vidyalay. And I see around me so many good, successful people of Kendre Vidyalay today. And that's how I feel how we at our uh, times, Used, uh, used to study in government schools and do well in the life. Because these days, parents only stress upon, uh, you know, start sending their children to um, uh, uh, good uh, uh, schools, pay so much money. And we used to pay only three rupees per month. The fees used to be three rupees per month in my time. So uh, for quarterly fees, we used to pay nine rupees. I started going to school by myself. First thing I learned to be self-reliant at very, very young age. I was in fourth. Since then I had my own cycle. And from there to graduation, I always had cycle or scooter by myself. Never relied anyone, never told anyone or requested anyone to, you know, be with me at, at any place. Like uh, nobody used to uh, shuffle me around uh, in cars or in scooter. So uh, in fact, my uh, friends, uh, parents used to tell me that uh, if you are coming late, please drop her first and then you go home. So I used to be like a protected, protective person who used to give protection to others at that young age also. Uh, I had that 
spirit of changing things around me which i used to think that it is not all right because from dehradun uh, as i don't know what is nowadays but uh, those days eve teasing were very very prevalent uh, and uh, especially the young boys used to be after uh, girls and we have to really fight it out uh, for going out also with parents because they were worried about our security but yes there were no rape kind of thing and only the eve teasing was there but eve teasing was also were taken in very serious way so i was the one who used to stand up and fight against those eve teasers in those days and sometime people used to call me khatra and uh, those days indira gandhi was the prime minister so they people used to share you know uh, tell me she is uh, like indira gandhi she starts fighting anywhere she she you know fights for her rights so uh, from that age onwards and when i grew up uh, i went to college and dav college in those days i don't know about now but it was in famous in some ways like uh, boys used to be very rowdy uh, and not many girls used to attend that dav college people women used to go to mkp but being from a co coeducational schools also i used to like to study with uh, boys and girls all the time and i never used to you know say ki main ye nahi kar sakti ki main ladki hu main nahi kar sakti mujhe ladke ke sath baat nahi karni ya mujhe i never felt like that and that gender discrimination was never in my mind and uh, for my uh, good luck my parents also never discriminated between brothers and sisters uh um, we were all free to choose our line we were all free to do whatever we want to do and at that that young age i also mm -hmm. learned one thing that you should earn your own money uh and i was very young i started sometime taking classes of younger children uh if the tuition fees was only 50 rupees i was very happy to you know earn 50 rupees also so um i started even after 10th i started uh, sending my resume to delhi so i used to think ki i'll pick up a job and study but my father insisted no you have to finish your studies first uh in between i met my future husband now husband uh, and uh, uh and that was also you know i took the initiative and i proposed him even at a very young age and after uh, he went to the army uh, i got married at very young age but with that marriage nothing stopped my growth never stopped and when my daughter was 2 years i started doing diploma courses wherever we were posted because he was in army we we, we used to get posting at different places so wherever he used to get posting i used to start one course i've done fashion designing to 2 years diploma i've done a uh, diplo high diploma in computer application i have done so many courses uh, with uh, joining part time jobs also doing jobs earning little money for myself and doing my studies also uh, then we settled uh, in panchkula uh, and i was my father uh, was very very supportive to for me that if you want to change something you need to have some power in yourself other otherwise you will not be able to change the world where what you think so i joined uh, politics um, in, uh, when we were settled in uh, panchkula and i was just 32 when i joined uh, politics and uh, but after joining politics i realized that you have to change yourself first before you change others because so many things around you suddenly you find that uh, politics is not your cup of tea because how people speak to you how they criticize you but then my uh, husband also was very supportive and whenever i used to come crying at home that somebody has said this and that somebody has said that he used to say that's what people want that you should sit at home and not fight because they know your capability that you can go ahead and uh, in politics you have to make your own space nobody is going to hand hold you and you know take you up because everybody is fighting for their own space in that 
uh, and uh, after going through lot of lot of lot of struggle especially when women are in politics let me tell you it is not very easy when you don't have a um, godfather in politics when you don't have that kind of money uh, uh, you cannot be but uh, with my hard luck and the support of my family uh, i could reach at this position uh, and it is a long journey i can't share with um, like small small antidotes with you but some some time in future i may write a uh, autobiography and uh, it will be let me tell you very very interesting for others um, not only they will learn about my what i have achieved but they will learn about my failures also because uh, yes i have failed many times but whenever i failed i never uh, for short period i used to be in my cocoon but i then i fought with my own emotions with all my own failures and i used to make myself ready for the next fight but because and then if people are watching me today i must tell you that when you are low and you are down you should never ever say that i'm all right say that yes i'm down i'm not feeling good and give yourself some time and then never take it permanent uh, your uh, like your wins your lose loss loss is also not permanent uh, so you have to fight it out you have to come up and only you can do that no other person can do that no medicines can you know make you happy again no drug can make you happy again only your inner will can make you um, stand up again and fight again so i am not saying that my journey is over this is also a journey i have future plans i am 57 but i always say that i have to do this i have to do that people say you are 57 how can you you know still dream to have your own business but i always say that they, it's never too late and you can start anywhere from anywhere so that's how my journey is thank you for asking me this question ma'am uh, the whole journey and the walk through that you took uh, all the audience through with your answer to the first question i must admit that i was listening to it very very carefully and it was a kind of a roller coaster for me as well while you were explaining it and i'm sure uh, all the hardships that you have faced and how you may how you made those hardship turn around and become an opportunity for you with your inner resilience is an inspiration and a definite take away for this audience ma'am now proceeding ahead in this discussion i would like to know something more from you ma'am you yourself have been an excellent leader who is extremely high in spirit as we just saw through your answer and who is also willing to support and contribute to society as we can see it from the various contribution you have been making through national commission for women what leadership traits according to you ma'am are the most required in one's life and career and any special traits you think which are very very specific for women leaders firstly leaders are those who can fight from the uh, front they can lead only by giving example they cannot just order and get the things done they have to do it themselves and then give an example to others secondly leaders are those who make leaders like them they are not the one who i uh, only want followers but they pick people like themselves and make them leaders secondly uh, leaders are those who are not afraid of saying that this is wrong they are never um, what do you say uh, politically you don't have to be politically correct all the time you should voice your opinion there are goods and bads in the society and you should not be afraid of saying that this is bad i have seen people don't raise their voice when something is happening with others and i am very very 
you know i am a person like if something is happening with a, a another woman uh, uh, on the street i will stand there and support her and uh, see that she is safe uh, whether i am a i'm chair person now but i was never like this i was nothing but even as a, a child as a young girl i used to stand by others uh, if if you see two two people are fighting and taking side is never bad i'm telling you people think, say that side nahi leni hai humko kisi ki but if you are not taking side that means you want to make everybody happy uh, but you are not in with anyone you are with everybody but you are not with anyone that means so you have to see who is right and who is right, uh, wrong and you have to stand by that person who is right yes it is a perceptive perception that who right and wrong but there are few things which can never be wrong or uh, never be right like uh Mm, teasing a person or uh, like uh, like a, mm, anything which is, which you you think your heart is saying that this is wrong you should stand you should listen to your heart uh, we are always think of from our uh, mind but i listen from my heart because heart will never tell you that this is uh, wrong heart will always uh, steer you towards the right so um, a leader is one who listen to the heart also and when you are listening to heart many a times uh, you are doing wrong to yourself also because so many people will stand against you tum galat ho tum ye ho lekin usme se nikalna bhi aapka kaam hai aap kaise nikalte ho or uh, 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 finally people will accept you as you are and they know that you are you were the right person so a leader should always uh make up the mind what is wrong and what is right very well said ma'am definitely these are some very 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 serious thoughts to ponder upon now uh, coming to the next question ma'am that i have for you as you all know that our country is going through this immense pandemic of covid 19 and it has really challenged humanity all around the world and our country is no different during these unprecedented times you have successfully led many initiatives like i informed the audience like setting up of whatsapp helpline for women in distress happy to help task force for elderly along with a fast complete redress system for the elderly ma'am can you share few anecdotes on these initiatives that you took during covid 19 as to how these initiatives have made an impact on lives of various people uh when the pandemic started in march and the lockdown happened in the end of the march everybody thought that we will sit at home and do nothing and we'll have a gala time even in my office there were people who were who were thinking that it it is going to be a long holiday but i uh, neither i sat one day without work and nor i let anybody in my office sit without work so from day one we were running office as it is from home we used to sit in front of our, our computers have meetings continuously share our uh, thoughts how to go about it online whatever work we were doing uh, offline we started our work online whether it is webinar uh, seminar to webinar uh um, complaints online we uh, we immediately started giving advertisement on um, uh, tv and uh, uh social media that this is our website you can't send letters to us but send us uh, um, emails on these these email ids and uh then i read in the paper that the domestic violence in other countries is increasing and st- i started wondering how people will reach us if we are not having office if we if they can't write us the letter because in india um, not many people know how to email uh, and how to be online uh, how to register online complete they used to send us uh, mostly by post so, uh, then we i one night i was sitting and i 
said, why can't we have a WhatsApp number? Because everybody's got these days WhatsApp, whether a woman from a village or an everyone. I think most of the people are, have got phones these days and they can send a WhatsApp. Uh, even if a woman can't type, they know how to record their voice message on WhatsApp and send. So uh, we started, uh, I had a number which was um, lying with me. I started on my own number of WhatsApp and next day we saw that number blocked because so many complaints, complaints started coming. So we had to shift it to a, a, a business number and uh, started this work on uh, WhatsApp uh, number and so many complaints started coming. I made a group of uh, young girls who were working with my in my office and told them that 24 by 7 you have to take care of these complaints. Immediately start responding to these women. Uh, unfortunately, very uh, a lot many people started sending useless things also on WhatsApp. So one person only used to, uh, you know, uh, uh, take uh, out those only the complaints. Uh, and then uh, another group of uh, four or five people uh, used to start responding to the women and sending those complaints forward to uh, police officers. And uh, we helped a lot of uh, women those days. And the work was better than before when we used to you know, register complaints, send a letter. In fact, this was uh, better uh, and uh, time was not consumed as much as you, we were uh, doing earlier. Then we saw that so many elderly people were not getting ration because of lockdown or their medicine. So we started, I just, uh, one day I tweeted without starting any infrastructure for this thing. I tweeted, anybody has uh, um, parents in India and they uh, the children are away, they can uh, some, uh, tweet me on uh, and tag happy to help and tweet me back and I will uh, um, uh, help them and immediately so many requests started coming uh, that I have to I had to start one uh, group all over India who could you know work together and start sending help to those elderly so I I am I am the person who used to who, who always jump in water and start you know learning swimming up after uh, uh, facing problems. So that was uh, the thing uh, which happened that that time also that I jumped in with the one tweet. And, but I am happy that so many people came forward. In the on Twitter also people started tweeting that I am uh, available. I can help you out. I am available. I can help you out in this state. So I had that group of uh, civilian people or normal people who were helping us out in that endeavor. Uh, and it was very, very successful. Even personalities like Amitabh Bachchan uh, tweeted about, uh, about it that NCW is doing this. So many uh, sports person uh, tweeted about this and it was uh, successful and uh, appreciated by many in society also. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that is uh, such a nice thing to know. Uh, in our classrooms, we teach a lot about agility and adaptability. And if there has to be a life exa live example for to be given, I guess uh, uh, this is one uh, very nice case study that how things can start from a simple sim lying at your home and it can create a national advantage for underprivileged elderly women and all of those who are in distress and who need a certain compassionate hand to, look, to be looked after. And it also points to a very wonderful phenomena in our society that actually social media can be put to use for very, very good reasons. Though of late, we do not see that happening and social media has become a tool of rebuking and trolling and other things. But yes, uh, hats off to you, ma'am, to have thought so wonderfully well in these prime times. Ma'am, coming ahead in this discussion, in this interaction, I would now like to know something more from you. You have always been a votary of self-reliance for women. And you have yourself led many initiatives in this direction. Ma'am, in your view, what does the society needs to do 
so that more women can become self reliant and be participant to the growth growth story of our great nation uh, what society can do is that uh, treat women like any human being because they equal human being i would like, uh, like to say uh, no gender discrimination in anything uh, because women and girls face this gender discrimination at their home also from the birth itself uh, so we have to have a gender free society first if we want a women to uh, help in nation building uh, come forward and 50% uh, population is of women and if we want that 50% to participate in this we want to give them equal opportunity uh, equal education equal skill and no work is like uh, it is not for women it, it it should not be any work which is not for women every work and women should also not take advantage of being a woman and say that i can't do is this thing because i am a woman because if we say this people will take advantage of uh, our own shortcomings and they have a excuse to keep us away from work so we need to and we have got rights from our constitutions we need to create opportunity for ourselves also women need to hand hold of other women because men will or, or other people will not come from you know outside and they will support you we need to make a strong group which can help each other uh, society has to have like from the family itself treat their daughters equal as their sons whether it is education a skill uh, job opportunities or any other any other uh, uh, if you you send your sons out at night you don't send your daughter outside that that is also wrong so uh, uh, we need to give equal space equal opportunity equal education to everyone i think we should even have a gender specific school ki ye ladkiyon ka hi school hai aur ye ladkon ka hi school hai we need to uh, this uh, every gender have and i'm not only speaking about two genders there is a third gender also so we need to have a gender free society and not think on any uh, any other line there are good people good human being and bad human being there is no like ladkiyan is cheez mein galat hoti hain ya ladkiyan ye nahi kar sakti hain ya ladke ye kar sakte hain we all can do everything people say that science is for boys ya maths is for boys and it is totally wrong there are mathematician and if you see our scientists so many scientists are women and they are doing wonderful job uh, there are many cooks many um, cooks who are men and they are also doing wonderful job so there is no such job only for a gender a specific gender uh, let's have a gender free society give and yes women need to earn their own money and take their own decisions i am very very particular that even if women are earning their money some sometimes they, they can't spend that money uh, uh, on their own will so they should take their own decisions and stand by their decisions ye nahi kahe oh mujhse galti ho gayi ha matlab hui to main usko main khud theek karungi galti hoti hai stand by your own decisions and take your own decisions ma'am uh, that's a very well taken point i guess uh, independence and freedom to act at all levels for our women and girls will definitely stand, uh, stand uh, as a very very important cornerstones to their overall development <clears throat> ma'am uh, your untiring advocacy for equal property rights for women has been taken very well by the society you yourself has uh, led to uh, making amends and corrections to the posh act that is prevention of sexual harassment at workplaces the guardianships act for mothers and following which recommendations were also sent to the law ministry 
that they have real power to our work folks how has been your experience with legal conquest as you were participating with a different ministry and a different set of people through ncw see my experience is good because people who come in these uh, law reviews they are all educated they know what ncw wants and how we want to proceed and they take, take things forward like property right uh, i am we have a patriarchal society and not only in india it is everywhere almost in all over the world it is a patriarchal society and in that even when the law, uh, law has said that women should be equally uh, giving given for property uh, nobody gives equal property to their daughter and when i talk to these young girls in colleges and schools and must be many women are listening and young girls are listening today itself i should i'm i must tell them that this is their your right this is your right and nobody is giving you out of you know their sweet will this is your right and right should be taken or snatched also if no not given properly so uh, uh, we always think that if i will ask for the equal property my relationship with my brother will go sore but we should be, uh, we should not think about that because uh, maintaining relationship is both uh, brothers and sisters both uh, responsibility it is not a woman's responsibility only and if a responsive uh, relationship is based on the property that that means that relationship no, is not worth keep for uh, keeping uh, you you have to have your uh, fall back plan and if you have got a property you can always fall back on that if your marriage is not uh, successful you can fall back on your property uh, if you are not successful in your um, work you can fall back on your property there is there are so many things if you have got property you are you can never take any violence from your husbands also because you know that you can you can go back and stay in your own house so when pay, even the when father and mother say that we a daughter is for others family and only the son is from this family how will the in laws treat you like your own member if your own parents will not treat you like your own member so treat your daughters equally that's what i am saying when you treat you them equally you will give them property also equally there is a law but implementation is not there so implementation we need to have proper law and then uh, husband ki property pe kaise mangenge jab father hi aapko equal property nahi dega so uh, husband also when he is earning uh, whatever he is earning while he is married the women is 50% uh, uh, should get 50% from that but uh, generally people think that uh, giving maintenance is like we are giving a bheek to a woman it is not bheek she is also participating in uh, making your family happy she is working for your family so uh, in that also a woman should always have equal right thank you ma'am uh, for elaborating on all of those uh, aspects that you touched upon while making amends to these acts and proposing changes ma'am while we can speak about your achievement for hours and hours we have some very uh, young uh, female students of ups who are listening to you through this session and on other platforms as well as we have our uh, female fraternity from ups who is part of the shakti initiative uh, and this is a question which will resonate with all of them so i am actually asking it on behalf of all of, mm -hmm. all of them uh, how all of the girls and the women they should proceed in their lives so that while they are making professional conquests they can also impact lives of others because that is something every right minded individual would like to do and how they are they are also empowered so that they can be make a difference like you do to various people and you have been doing ever since your studentship as they move their as they move ahead in their lives and careers ma'am over to you 
So this will not only for women. This is this is for everyone, for men and women both, uh, because you have to be aware of your society around. You cannot live in a cocoon. हम दो और हमारे दो अगर हम उसी में रहेंगे तो आई आई थिंक वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू थिंक अबाउट सोसाइटी एंड वॉट वी हैव सीन दीज डेज दैट पीपल आर ओनली बॉदर्ड अबाउट देयर ओन सेल्फ अर्लियर वी यूज टू से दैट यू नो सोसाइट नेशन फर्स्ट सोसाइटी सेकेंड फैमिली थर्ड एंड मी माई सेल्फ इज द लास्ट बट नाउ वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज मैं पहले मेरा परिवार फिर मेरे रिश्तेदार फिर सोसाइटी और इंडिया तो चल ही रहा है भारत तो चल ही रहा है जब तक ये सोच रहेगी हमारी ना मुझे लगता है वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू मेक अ गुड सोसाइटी वेयर वी वुड लाइक टू रेज आर चिल्ड्रन प्रॉपरली बिकॉज वी ऑल्सो टीच आर चिल्ड्रन ओनली टू बी अ मनी मेकिंग मशीन वी डोंट टीच देम टू बी गुड ह्यूमन बींग वी नेवर टेल देम the stories about good people we don't uh, tell them to be good him individual we tell them kitne number aaye uh, kaun sa job milega what is your package what oh, package is the best thing in the life of our you know families these days of how much money is a boy earning even if the advertisement i am giving i am little explaining uh, in a um like uh, in different way when you see the advertisement matrimonial advertisement what you see for a man if you are uh, giving an advertisement uh, he should be earning in these many figures uh, he should be a successful uh, entrepreneur or a businessman or a, a army officer or anything engineer doctor aise mangte hain hum apni ladki ke liye agar ladki ki advertisement deni ho to khoobsurat ho इतना दिखने में इतने हो और उसको घर में खाना वाना बनाना आता हो वी आर नॉट सीकिंग अ पार्टनर वी आर सीकिंग सम मशीन फॉर इच अदर लाइक अ मशीन ऑफ मेकिंग मनी एंड मशीन ऑफ मेकिंग चपाती सो हाउ विल सोसाइटी यू नो गो हेड एंड आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड इवन इफ there is some fight happening uh, a woman is being tortured or raped even people will start making videos of that thing they will not go ahead and help that women or a man if somebody is not giving money to a rickshaw wala and people will start seeing that there is a fight going on they will never go ahead and help that person so society is uh, happy in the, their themselves in their families and not thinking about others and we should start thinking about others nation first society second uh, then family and then me iske upar agar aaj hum aaj se kaam shuru karna shuru karenge mujhe lagta hai men or women sabki life change ho jayegi uh, and especially uh, parents with young children please don't make them money making machine or a good wife housewife only make them good human being in good individuals who are who are going to be asset for the for the society and the nation kal ko jab wo bade ho to aapko unpe naaz ho aise log banaye ye nahi ki 10 log aake aapko unki shikayat kar rahe ki aapka ladka wahan par ye kar raha tha तो चाहे वो कितना भी बड़ा कितने भी बड़े मार्क्स लेके आए फिर आप यू विल बी फीलिंग अशेम्ड इफ योर सन विल डू दैट सो दिस इज माय व्यू ऑन द सोसाइटी हाउ वी कैन मेक सोसाइटी हैप्पी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन डेफिनेटली मैम आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू टेल द ऑडियंस दैट इफ यू गॉट एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज कीप देम पुटिंग इन द चैट बॉक्स एंड अनदर 5 टू 10 मिनट्स विल स्टार्ट टेकिंग द ऑडियंस क्वेश्चन दैट्स वेल ma'am uh, as you have studied in dehradun and you have a deep connection with uttarakhand mm -hmm. uttarakhand is primarily a hill state and we all understand that life in hills has its own individual challenges uh, how in your view society can solve the challenge of women who toil hard in harsh hilly hilly terrains of states like uttarakhand himachal pradesh or even northeast 
uh, as I was telling you, I'm proud of uh, the fact that I'm from Uttarakhand. I'm proud of the women of Uttarakhand because they are very, very hardworking people. They take care of the society also. When we were kids, it was for nature, for the trees. And the beginning was done by women of the society. They did that. And score of uh, work like these, they started. Women of the uh, there are so many self-help group in Uttarakhand. I recently visited with the CM of uh, Uttarakhand uh, to uh, a remote area. I've learned that small self-help group, uh, women, uh, women are doing wonderful job. They are making small little things and selling them all around Uttarakhand. And uh, they are uh, not only earning money for themselves, they are earning money for their families also. Mm -hmm. Because most of the men in Uttarakhand Pahadi or Ilaku may admi johe niche age kam karne ke liye. Many places are there where only women and children are there. So uh, sometimes men even stop sending money back. So they are the one who are earning for their families. Uh, and we must learn how to respect those small things which they are making. We, Made in India, ka jo mantri ne nara diya, we should, I think, learn that we should uh, buy things from these small help, help, uh, self help groups uh, to make them successful. There are many things where Uttarakhand, like, bahut sari dale hai jo Uttarakhand mein ye mai, mai karti hai. And one more thing, what Uttarakhand is doing that farming is done by mostly women in Uttarakhand. So we should, uh, you know, hand them. Uh, if we want these women to be a successful entrepreneur, we have to buy their things, advocate about their produce, uh, market their produce, give them opportunity to market on social media. And we also help them in, on social media, how they can earn their money. Uh, and also let others also um, learn from them that how they can also uh, earn their money. Uh, women who are, especially young girls who are uh, studying in the universities and colleges, in their um, holidays, they can go to these remote areas to help them out. Go help them, uh, help them in faking, uh, making face, Facebook pages for their uh, produce. Uh, make them uh, uh, help them in making WhatsApp groups where they can sell their products. And uh, you can also teach them other things also, uh, how to operate a computer, how to send an email. How to, if we are helping these women, I think they are the one who are now going to be the future of the, not only Uttarakhand, uh, in ev everywhere. I've seen even in nor Northeastern states, wherever these hilly areas are there northeastern state all women are doing wonderful job uh, in fact i when i went there the whole market was run by women there and i asked where are the men of those i went to manipur and i asked where are your men because everywhere i can see women heart hai sabzi bech rahi hai kuch bhi kar rahi hai all women are doing so uh, when women are doing such wonderful job, we need to enhance their skill. We need to uh, support them in marketing. And um, even the government should uh, support them by providing them. That is what we are. These days, government is doing mudra yojana hai ya uh, banking system jo change hua hai. They are helping. Uh, we also have to teach them that these are the schemes which are provided by the government and you can take help from these schemes. There are so many wonderful schemes which are uh, uh, started by this uh, government, present government, and we should tell them that you can get loans and uh, by getting these loans, they can you know, upscale their business. And I'm always saying that rather than seeking job, you should be a uh, job creator. And when women are, women are entrepreneurs, they are giving jobs to other women also. Uh, so we should help them in little making them aware of these schemes. 
and they will be i think they are doing wonderful job and they will be doing better definitely ma'am uh, it's a point well taken and i guess uh, government has also started many initiatives in this direction and uh, definitely many people uh, can take benefit from this ma'am uh, now i will go to uh, certain audience questions we have many questions as i can see through the dashboard so i'll be picking up a few from them as you would know uh, uh, we have got a uh, very deep connection with uh, ibm uh, in our computer science engineering programs and i have got one of my colleagues rajni radhakrishnan who has joined over there uh, through this conference mm -hmm. and she has a question uh, which is challenging her uh, area of operation what she says is that they have an initiative there where they are trying to give digital education to girls students in the rural areas and the biggest problem that they are facing is that uh, parents uh, they do not send the girl children uh, beyond a certain age uh, any thoughts on this that how we can handle this as a society or whether uh, we as a university can come handle this i mean any thoughts you can share obviously see we every problem we can tackle with the changing of the mindset of people so here also we need to change the mindset of those parents who are not sending their daughters away for the education there uh, i think they must be thinking about the safety and security of the, their daughters first thing is we have to provide them safe envi environment for the young girls uh, and tell them that this is a secure and safe environment and they can send their daughters secondly we need to tell them that these girls are as good or as bad as their sons are so if they think that only sons will take care of them at the old age that that is wrong the daughters also take care and take care better in a better way of the parents and they should be given opportunity so that they become a better individual earn money and in future when you need their help they will be able to provide you the support what we, what you will be needing so uh, uh, yes it it is a long way we have to talk and only the talk and make will change them you have to go to their place homes um, have a discussion with the parents call them uh, at the schools have parent teacher meetings or um, wherever you can meet them we need to counsel the parents and only counseling can change definitely when i guess uh, stakeholder identification and uh, their uh, participation will definitely go a long way i hope uh, that answer rajni's question uh, so i'm going forward to the next question one of my colleagues from school of computer science dr deepshika bhargava she is a professor as well as a head in computer science department so uh, she has asked a very uh, interesting question where she is asking that you are yourself are an empowered woman you are donning various hats in your personal and professional life so how do you balance between your social professional and your family responsibilities ma'am i never found it difficult um, and never ever because i think i have a, i have two daughters uh, and i have made them a very very empowered individuals i i will not say daughters because they are individuals and they are not only take, taking care of themselves they are taking care of their families uh, their in-laws and at times at me also so um, i think i never got this problem basically i got support from the family my husband was very supportive so um, in fact even for a day if i am sitting and doing nothing uh, beside being with family i feel that something is missing in my life so um, i i am a multitasker i if i am talking with me you i can check my email to get and i can talk Uh, i can even respond to the email and talk so um, and mostly women are multitasker they are uh, working at home they are working in their offices coming back taking care of their children's education and that's what we have learned from our mothers and our grandmothers and everybody i think they are doing wonderfully well 
uh, same here with me. Uh, I take care of my family. Even I love gardening, so I go in the evening see my garden. Kya gobi ugi hai, nahi ugi hai, bindi ki kharaab hui hai. So I <laughs> I take care, and I'm a very good cook. So I love cooking and baking. I love dogs, so I play with my dogs. There, twenty-four hours. You can do a lot of things. Sleep is only for me six hours, uh, so it's a long time. I love social media. I love watching movies. I do all these things in one day, so <laughs> there's no problem. Wow! So I guess uh, that settles it uh, for all of who are thinking that professional and social life can't be balanced. So here is one. Um, uh, immense learning and with this lockdown i guess uh, on a lighter note many men have also turned yeah. to cooking so maybe some part can be taken care by men also so all the men who are listening maybe please start let's start helping our women and uh, now i'll go to next question which is uh, by one of my another colleague uh, that is dr juhi gar she is the deputy director for the shakti initiative at upa so uh, she asked that how have you managed to deal with politics that was planted around you or against you and what leadership trait helped you to deal with that uh, see i will say that always i was not very good at handling uh, politics around me yes uh, sometime i was really bad i cried a lot sometime i planned to quit uh, Mm, i will not do anything and sat at home for few days uh, but you should know your minuses and plus and mm, acknowledge yet yeah, this yes this here i was wrong when you acknowledge then only you start working on your minuses if you say that nothing is wrong with me and everything is wrong with others you will not be successful person so uh, you have to acknowledge yes here i was wrong why i sat at home for so many days why i crib so much i will say that i am um, i will not be like a politician because i'm i'm a little move fat i so usme mujhe lagta hai ki main kabhi vote seek karne ke usme nahi jaungi i i'm a politician but i will i i'm not going to contest election because some time you have to be you will have to be quiet in politics you can't always say what you think that i am not that kind of person uh, so this is my minus and i am still learning i maybe some day i you know overcome this problem of mine uh, and yes uh, the leadership quality you are talking about is this is also my leadership quality but people who were working with me from last 25 years ab yaad karte hain ki wo bahut tez thi usne tab bhi nahi suna aur aaj bhi nahi sunti hai ab wo realize karte hain because mera minus hi mera kahin kahin plus bhi hai people what is inside me is outside so there is no difficulty in in uh, learning about me what i am i am uh, and uh, and i stand by people people who have not even uh, done anything for me in life i will stand by them if they are right and that is my quality that you should stand by your own people by the um, by people and same is uh, the party and party always thought that kuch bhi ho jaye ye naraz ho sakti hai lekin party chhod nahi sakti wo utni himmat aur utna vishwas aap mein hona chahiye logon ka जब लोगों का विश्वास आप पे होता है तो आप भी उसको निभाते हो ठीक से और उसको पैदा करने के लिए हिम्मत चाहिए मेहनत चाहिए बहुत यू हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी हार्ड वर्किंग और uh, एक अपनी लाइन जो बन गई है उसको छोड़ना नहीं वो बहुत जरूरी है पॉलिटिक्स में वेरी राइट मैम एंड ऑफ कोर्स इन पब्लिक लाइफ एंड व्हेन यू डीलिंग विद पीपल in any profession controversies will definitely come and surround you because ultimately in leadership positions uh, one is tend to take decisions and if uh, it works well for uh, most of the people i guess you have taken the right decision and uh, and uh, i guess you, you have perfectly answered the question that has been asked now moving to the last question for today ma'am uh, i have a question from my colleague uh, professor dr neelu unja 
she uh, she asked a very philosophical question the question is that women are over emotional at times but they are very natural in certain other situation and this affects their own personal growth uh, because of the mindset of male decision maker so how do you handle it uh, professionally and personally emotions can never be wrong let me tell her emotions are very beautiful thing i can cry in front of so many people if emotions are there uh, and that is also a strength that if you are ready to show your tears if you can sh- ready to share laughter you you should be uh, sharing your tears also and emotions are the things uh, but yes you cannot take certain decisions when you are emotional you should hold those decisions for some times and when you are at right my, uh, my um, mind frame then you should take the decisions this sometime emotions don't let you take proper decisions and that i have learned a hard way because um, and still today i start counting when i am very very you know emotional and uh, charged or gussa bahut aaya to i i hold myself back i count for some time give myself some time to react earlier i used to you know uh, even if i want to write on whatsapp message karna hai kuch padha hai galat ta 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 kiya aur uske baad send and then you feel oh maine kyun kar diya maine kyun bhej diya but now i think twice ki bhejo ki nahi bhejo bhejo ki nahi bhejo when you give yourself time then you take a right decision and uh, what she said that women this is a minus point that women no it is not a minus point sometimes emotions make us stronger than others and uh, we also connect with others emotions because hum jab apne emotions ko jante hain to dusre ke emotions ko bhi samajhne ki koshish karte hain और वो हमें एक स्ट्रॉन्ग इंडिविजुअल बनाता है बट हाँ जब आप डिसीजन लो तो इमोशनल होके ना लो तब आप सोच के लो एक इंडिविजुअल की तरह कि आपको इस पे स्टैंड लेना पड़ेगा समटाइम वट यू से और राइट ई मेल दिस इज गोइंग टू बी रिकॉर्ड फॉर यू फॉर लाइफ लॉन्ग सो थिंक ट्वाइस एट दैट टाइम Especially written में कुछ भी आपने भेजना है उस, उसको आप बहुत बार सोच के इवन स्पीकिंग यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल इन दिस डिजिटल वर्ल्ड वॉट यू आर स्पीकिंग बिकॉज एवरीबडी इज रिकॉर्डिंग वट यू आर स्पीकिंग सो थिंक ट्वाइस डोंट टेक एनी इमोशनल डिसीजन फॉर योर सेल्फ और फॉर अदर्स ग्रेट मैम Uh, so uh, this is a wonderful insight that you have given that emotions can be a very good driver for uh, building up your thoughts but decision making has to come out of some serious uh, thought evaluation and uh, there should be a matrix around how one makes decision definitely very well explained ma'am uh, so with this ma'am i would ha- actually would have like uh, like to continue for a for a longer period but in uh, in view of the time constraint that you have so any any last words that you want to share with the audience and uh, you will uh, glad to know your thoughts on ashakti initiative and how generally life has been to you so all of these things ma'am yes i'm happy that you've started this initiative shakti but it should not stop with in one year it should continue because Uh, it's a long way to f- make women empowered it is not like we do one webinar and we- women will be empowered so it is uh, the the problems of women are deep rooted in the society and the cause is deep rooted of those problems so we need to work continuously on those problems only then i think we will be make uh, uh, able to make uh, women empowered and secondly nobody outside will be able to help you unless you make yourself empowered women need to work on their empowerment themselves uh, they should be very very strong uh, individuals and yes um, there are failures but don't just cry on those failures 
stand up, fight, fall, stand up, fight. This should always go on till the last breath. Never say never. That is that should be the attitude. That's all. Thank you so much. Definitely, ma'am. And I guess uh, these thoughts are relevant for both uh, women and men. So it's not something that is very, very specific to women. Yeah. So, ma'am, it was indeed a pleasure to have you here today speaking to us through the platform of Shakti at UPES. I'm sure uh, you would have enthused, like me, all the listeners, who are men or women, boys or girls, your presence uh, today over here will surely provide a momentum to the tremendous journey of Shakti that has started this year. And we will definitely take your feedback back and we will keep on continuing with our efforts, ma'am. We assure you of that. And uh, at the end, I will quote the words of uh, late President Dr. Abdul Kalam, uh, which he said in respect to women empowerment. He said, and I quote, empowerment of women leads to development of a good family, good society, and ultimately a good nation. When a woman is happy, the home is happy. When the home is happy, the society is happy. And when the society is happy, the state is happy. And when the state is happy, there will be peace in country and it will develop at a greater pace. Informally, ma'am, actually, you would have already touched upon these points and see how it resonated with my well-prepared quote. Thank you so much, ma'am, for coming and enlightening Thank us. You. Thank ready. you for listening to me. Thank you for giving me opportunity to speak. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.